sewing, quilting, and upcycling projects. Today we're going to fix an old quilt. This quilt is uh, a very treasured quilt of my customer. I think that her mother made it. There's just all kinds of stories in this quilt. The fabrics are very old. Some of them are faded, some of them have a little rip or a hole in it, but overall it's still very salvageable. So what my plan is, I'm going to take the ties off because this quilt was tied. In fact, when I first started quilting, I tied all of my quilts in my mom's living room. We would tie these by putting big needles through, using yarn, um, the kids would hide underneath and it would be a fun tent to hang in all day too. So, great memories. I'm sure that my customer's mom tied this in a similar way. And there's, gosh, I wish these quilts could talk. But I guess in a sense they do because when you look at these fabrics, you can tell some of them um, were probably either uh, house dresses or uh, curtains and Pants, suits, I mean there's some really crazy fun fabrics in this quilt. The goal is restoration. Whenever possible you want to restore a quilt. There, that's the way it was originally designed. So we want to respect that craft and restore quilts to their glory. Sometimes things are too damaged or um, don't necessarily have sentimental value, then we can repurpose them into other things. In one of my previous videos, I did take a quilt that was not sentimental and kind of ugly and turned it into a coat. You can look for that link below or at the end of this video, but please don't go there now. Wait and see what we're going to do with this one first, okay? So. I'm going to cut off the ties, take off the backing, and we're going to add new batting. And then I am going to do a light quilting over the top of it. When I say light, what I mean is I'm not going to do a heavy, dense quilting. The goal of the quilting is to stabilize the fabrics and to help them last longer. Some of the work that we're going to do is some repair work. There's a few places that the seams are coming apart. So I'm gonna make sure that those stay nice and strong and reinforce those before I put it on the quilt frame. Also, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up down below. And if you feel inclined, go ahead and subscribe so you can see more videos of what we do here. I think we got a good look at this quilt, so let's get started. I always do that. I don't know what that is. I discovered a new fashion look. I call it Rumple up a guess. Frumpy with Muppet. So I'm a frumple up a guess. Either that or I'm ready for the sound of music. Let's start at the very beginning. Just kidding. Day two. I ended up taking apart the quilt. I used a seam ripper to just go around the edges and take off the old binding. And I'm gonna have to go back and reinforce these edges. Uh, I'm looking forward to ironing out the, these parts, but what is happening is if you look, 
Because of the age of the quilt, the fabrics that were tucked underneath have a darker color or a brighter color than the part that was exposed. This is a good example of how fabrics fade, especially antique stuff. So do your best to take care of it. So I'm gonna go through and make sure that these seams are all tight and sewn. There's a few spots that are loose, so um, or there's um, tiny rips in, in some of them. So I'm gonna do that. But one thing I discovered from taking the quilt apart is that the batting is actually still usable. I thought maybe I'd have to replace it, but it's still in really good condition. By reusing the batting, first of all, the quilt will feel like it did before. For the customer, it will feel for, more familiar because it's the same batting. But also, I don't have to throw this in the garbage. My concern is once I put it on the quilting machine, it might not be big enough, but we'll see. This is the old backing. This, this is really not worth saving because it's, first of all, I wouldn't be able to quilt it on the quilting machine because this of this piping in here. Second of all, it's it's kind of worn and it's not really a great backing for a fabric because it's not very comfy. So my customer requested that I use muslin and that works great because it's soft and durable. I pre-washed it so when it's put together, if it is washed, this won't shrink because it's been washed, it's been put in the dryer, so it's good to go. So I'm gonna start fixing some of these holes and get it quilted. The next day. Well, this is day three of redoing this quilt. I've patched all the holes and sewn around the perimeter of this quilt because of the patchwork. I didn't want it to come apart. Let's see if we can get this thing on the quilting machine. Oh, by the way, if you don't have a quilting machine, you still can repair quilts. There's a couple of options that you can do. First of all, you can retie it, just like this was tied. Um, and there's many ways to just make up a frame and move your furniture back and set up this frame in your, in your living room. The other thing you can do is you can sew this on your regular domestic machine. Um, I used to, before I owned my quilting machine, I used to do all of my quilting on my Janome machines. Before I could sew that, I would have to do a couple things. I would pin through all three layers and have pins all over and kind of navigate around the pins, which wasn't, uh, wasn't ideal. So then I started using basting spray. It's totally up to you. I just really recommend you doing it in, in an open area outside and away from anything that it can stick to because it does get sticky. Um, also, it's because it's an aerosol can and I have pets like Sammy the bird. I could never use that when he was around, so I had to be very careful with it. So let's see if we can get this going. Here we go. Welcome to the final day of this project. I'm repairing this quilt. I have it loaded on my machine, ready to go. Thankfully, I was able to use the original batting, which will make the quilt feel like it did originally. I am almost ready. I just have to have some more coffee. And the cup does not lie. I saw that.
karma. I'm watching you, Wazowski. Always watching. But anyway, I'm going to do an all over quilt design. Trim it up, bind it, and get it back to the customer because she's going to be so happy to have her mama's quilt back. Well, I finally finished the, the quilt. It's ready to take a peek, so let's have the reveal. Um, I could even do a magic trick. Ready? One, two, three, boom! Look at that. There it is. It turned out so wonderfully. I am really excited about the quilting. I used the extra muslin for the binding. It's just nice because this muslin, it's just really natural looking um, and it works well with this antique fabric. When I bind quilts, I usually use two and a half inch binding strips. This is from another project, but it's two and a half inches. Um, and it's advised to cut on the bias when you're cutting binding, but I don't always do that. What? This was on the bias because when I made, this went around a coat and I had rounded edges and things. So that's why I used the bias. For this quilt, I didn't. The reason that I was taught to cut on the bias is because it gives and doesn't is supposedly doesn't wear out as much if it's on the bias because there's a stretch there honestly I've done it both ways and I feel like they wear the same way because these are straight edges I don't need it to be on the bias if I had a rounded edge then I would need to have the bias so that it would ease around the corner either. Uh, better. I suggest with antique fabrics that a quilt like this would be displayed very carefully. You want to make sure that it's not in direct sunlight. If you wanted to display it like on the end of a bed, just make sure it's not near a window. Also, what helps is if you rotate the quilt. So you don't always display it in the same way. You're always folding it, refolding it, moving it to different places. Honestly, it's gonna fade. That's what fabrics do. And yet, do you really want to take a quilt like this and store it in a cedar chest or the back of a closet because of the fading? I guess it's a personal preference but I'm in the camp that I would rather use these things and wear them out till they're um, thin. I think that's why our matriarchs and our ancestors made things like this is to be used. But to extend the life of the quilt, try to avoid displaying it in direct sunlight. Don't wash it frequently. It's more the dryer that's going to rip these fabrics or make them fragile. So if you do wash, make sure you just put it in a very gentle cycle. I also suggest using a washing machine that does not have an agitator. That's that thing in the middle that goes. Try to find a washer that doesn't have that. Do your best to just air dry it mostly. Yes, we want to flap it for, for a few minutes in the dryer, but use a low setting because that beading motion is what breaks down these fabrics. But as you can see, this is a beautiful quilt and it tells so many stories. I can't wait till my customer sees it. I think she's gonna love it. It's just a wonderful thing that she did to get this restored so that it can last for years to come for her whole family to see her mom's 
beautiful fabrics. Don't be afraid to do your own repairs, but if you do need my help, contact me through the email or the link below and I'd be glad to give you some advice. And if you haven't already, please make sure you like and subscribe to my channel so I can bring you more videos. I hope this video helped you with your project because remember, you can artfully sew. See you next time. I think I'm done. What do you think, Stel? Sometimes I wonder what's going on in here. <laughs>